I think it's something, especially for the people who took part in it, should be celebrated, but I hope that this will be the last time we celebrate it. I think we've, the world's progressed and attitudes have progressed since then. I think that it's a good thing. I think that people have to remember. And, you know, you, mu you must be made aware of what has gone on. And the VE was part of its VE Day cruise. It was here that thousands of troops embarked for the war in Europe. Today, the children had their own impressions of the importance of the occasion. It's 50 years ago, um, beating the Germans and just being free. It's good that we are having um, VE Day on the whole, because all the old people that are um, won't be alive in 50 years' time. There was a special tribute for veterans in Scotland. Here on Plymouth Hoe, more than 100,000 people have been marking the anniversary of peace. A little later in Spotlight, we'll be looking at commemorations and celebrations across the southwest. But first, the day here in Plymouth. Well, the organisers said they wanted a family day out, and that's certainly what they got. There's everyone here from tiny children to grandparents. John Minnell has this report. Like 50 years ago today, the perfect weather for a celebration, and they poured onto the hoe in their thousands. The QE2 arrived first thing on the penultimate leg of her VE day cruise. By this afternoon, you only had space to move if you were dancing. All the generations are here, and the only admission requirement has been to wear red, white and blue. But for many, it's been more than just an excuse for a carnival, not so much a day to celebrate, but a day to remember. Youngsters today uh, must remember what the sacrifices of, well, not myself, but our generation did to keep this country free. Well, I'm, I'm an American and I'm very grateful for the British 8th Army. They liberated me from a German camp uh, at the end of the war in a camp close to uh, Villach, Austria. So I had to come back and uh, I want to spend this day with the Brits. It has been a day for all ages, but some questioned whether a fairground was entirely appropriate for such an occasion. There should be more church service about that, because there's people enjoying themselves and uh, for all the millions that got lost, I don't agree with that. The events here go on late into the evening, culminating with a firework display after the two-minute silence tonight. Well, with me is one of the veterans who helped to make today possible, Alfred Arnold from Plymouth, who's 83 years young. I hope you don't mind me saying that, sir. No. What have been your feelings here today? Well, I think it's been wonderful being here. I, uh, I didn't feel like it first to start off, but when I come up here and saw the crowd enjoying themselves so much, yes, I, I'm all for staying there until it's black out. So where were you 50 years ago today? 50 years ago? Oh. You were still in Australia, I understand. Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, yes. I was, I was a lot of people, of course, tend to forget that there was a lot of war still to yeah, be fought. Yes. Um, when did you finally get back to Devon? I got back to Devon, what, during the war? After the war. Oh, after the war. Oh, about seven months passed because I'd already done the full whack on the ship that I'd done and I got relieved and I had to catch a liner home 
to pick up to come to Plymouth. A lot of catching up to do. I knew there was a daughter you had to meet that you haven't even met during the war. I know you're staying on this evening. Have a lovely and enjoyable time. Thank you for joining Thank us. Thank you very much. Well, let's turn our attentions now to Exeter and to East Devon, where commemorations have been going on all day. Hundreds of people turned out to the airport to see Concord make a special VE Day landing. The details from Ruth Clark. Hundreds of people came from miles around to see her, and right on time, she arrived. She came on a special VE Day trip, and conditions couldn't have been better. It was a marvellous flight today. Uh, all of us thoroughly enjoy flying the aeroplane, so it's a thrill wherever we go. But we don't come to Exeter very often, and so it's a special treat to come to somewhere different. For Exeter veterans of the war, today's events have brought back memories. Fifty years back, you remember things that through the 50-year period you've been working, that you, uh, you don't bother about, but that's engraved on your mind, and you never forget it. But in Exeter itself, the younger generations were making almost as much noise as Concord. Just one of a host of parties in Exeter's streets this afternoon. I don't think there's any place in Exeter that has got a party like this. We've all joined together, we've all put things on the table, money in the pockets, and the kids have had a really brilliant time. The party will be going on way into the night, but there's one bird who didn't hang around. Back to Heathrow. But now it's promised she'll be here again in June. Well, thousands of visitors converged on Weymouth seafront to watch the VE Day Parade, and the, and the World War II veterans received an enthusiastic welcome, as Alison Vowles reports. It was an unconventional start to the day. Tanks from all eras racing along Weymouth Beach, and it took some by surprise. For the veterans, the display was a perfect way to get everyone in the mood. I think it's right that we should celebrate that victory and, of course, commemorate all the people who helped bring it about at this time, 50 years later. Let us bless the Lord. Thank you, Lord. For the heroism and the courage of those who serve in the armed services, who work on the home front in civil defence, hospitals and relief agencies. <laughs> Cornick originally sang this on VE Day 50 years ago. Today, she repeated the honour. Then, onto the parade of over a thousand World War II veterans, many of them American. Over 350,000 of them passed through Weymouth before the D-Day landings. All were enthusiastically received by an appreciative audience. Peace. I think that is an important feature, don't you? Not victories or anything else, just peace. And that's what it should be. That's what I'd like to see anyway, for the rest of my life and my children's lives. This could be the last time VE Day is commemorated in such style, but no one will ever forget the efforts and sacrifices that were made bringing peace to Europe. The Prince of Wales has sent a personal message to Cornwall on VE Day to pay tribute to the men...